Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite features from Foundry V10, Adventures. Adventures make it easy to bundle up your content so that users can import it into their world. And they keep everything from scenes to playlists organized so that all of your links and folders continue to work as expected after they're imported. We're going to start by setting up a module, creating an adventure, adding some of the content from our world to it, and lastly, we'll build the adventure so that it will be easy to import. Let's get started. Unlike other things in Foundry like actors, items, and scenes, there's no tab for adventures in the sidebar. That's because an adventure needs to be in a compendium pack. Since I want to make this adventure installable by other people, I'm going to make a module, give it a compendium pack, and store everything in it. In V11 of Foundry VTT, you can easily create a module by heading to the Setup page, clicking on the Add-on Modules tab, and clicking on this gear icon. If you're still on V10, you can check out our packaging guide down below to learn how to make a module yourself. Once you've clicked on the gear, we can start making our module. First, we'll need to enter a title. You can name your module whatever you want, and you'll notice that the package ID below is automatically created based on that title. If you want to change it, just enter a new ID in the field, but you'll want to make sure that it's all lowercase and uses dashes instead of spaces. If you plan on distributing this module, you want to make sure that the ID is unique because two modules can't share the same ID. You can leave the package version as it is, or change it if you prefer a different versioning scheme. The package URL can be left blank, or you can add a link to where people can learn more about your module. The description can be plain text or include HTML, and should be a simple description of what your module includes. The compatibility field defines what versions of Foundry VTT your module works with. The minimum version will stop anyone with an older version of Foundry from installing it, and setting a maximum will ensure that no one with a newer version than what you list can install it either, but you don't need to set a maximum. The verified version is just the latest version you've actually tested against. We can leave these all as they are because we'll be building the module in V11, which means it won't be installable by anyone using V10 or earlier versions. Then, we can head to the Authors tab where we can add everyone who is going to work on this module. Just press Add Author, enter name, and any other details that you want, and then you can add more authors to remove any that you don't need. Next up, we can choose the compendium packs that we want this module to have. You can add a compendium pack for anything, but I'll just add an adventure pack. We can set the pack's label, and just like the module title, you can see its name is being generated automatically. One important thing to know for adventure packs is that if you want it to include system-specific content like actors or items, you'll need to set the game system for that pack, and anyone who isn't using that game system won't be able to import your adventure. If you just want to store scenes, journal entries, cards, or playlists, you don't have to set a game system though, and everyone will be able to import it. If you want a pack to only be visible to Game Masters, just check the GM Only checkbox. Lastly, we have Relationships, which is where you can define any systems or modules that your module relies on. You can select any game system or module that you currently have installed and give it a category. If your module requires a specific game system, leave it on Game System. If you have a hard requirement for a given module, you can set it to be a required dependency, which will prevent users from activating your module without also activating that module. Recommended compatibility will encourage users to install and activate the selected module, but it won't require it. And known conflict lets you tell users that your module will not work with another module that they're currently using. Once you finish filling everything out, press Create Package, and you've got a brand new module ready to go. With our module created, let's jump into our world. Activate the module, and we can now see the pack we made in our Compendium tab. Though through the power of editing, I've also already created some content in this world that we can use. If you'll be distributing this module to others, just make sure that anything you'll be including in your adventure stores its assets in the modules folder. For example, this actor has its portrait art stored in my modules folder. Now that we have our compendium pack and some content, we can make our first adventure. Almost. The lock next to the pack means we can't edit it. You can unlock a compendium pack by right-clicking on it and selecting the Toggle Edit Lock option. Then you can open it normally. It's empty right now, so press the Create Adventure button and you'll see the Adventure Builder pop up with tabs for Summary and Contents. The Summary tab contains all of the basic information about your adventure, like the name, banner image, banner caption, and description. 
The Contents tab is where things start to get interesting. You can drag and drop any content, including entire folders, from the sidebar or the macro bar onto the builder, and it will be staged for inclusion in your adventure. It's easy to remove anything from the stage and ground that you don't want by pressing the X to its right. Once you've added everything that you want to include in this adventure, you can press Build Adventure. That will take everything we've staged in the builder and pack it into an importable adventure. As you can see, it's now available in our compendium pack, and if we open it, we'll see everything we filled out before exactly how other users will see it. But what if we forgot something or want to make changes, though? Thankfully, that's easy to do. Just right-click on your adventure, select Rebuild Adventure, and you'll see the same window as before. If we change to the Contents tab, we can see everything that was already added to our adventure no longer has a green background since there are no longer new additions. If we add some new content to the adventure though, it will be highlighted green, and if we remove something that was already in the adventure, it will be highlighted in red to show that it will be removed when we rebuild the adventure. There's one thing that's very important to note here though. When you press the Build Adventure button, absolutely everything in the adventure gets updated. That means if any content is missing in your world, it will be removed from the adventure. For example, if I close this window, delete an actor that was part of the adventure, and then open the builder again, you can see that the actor now shows in yellow, which means it will be removed if we press build. The best way to make sure that you don't accidentally delete anything is to create a new world, import your adventure, make any changes that you want to make, and then rebuild it. That way, you know that everything in your world is using what's in the adventure, and any changes you make will be caught. Then, just add any new content you've made to the adventure, and run Build Adventure again. Once you're finished, you can distribute your module exactly how you would normally. I hope you enjoyed that adventure as much as I enjoyed this shirt from the Foundry VTT merch store that you can find in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.